Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Blender on Seamster TV. In today's show we have a focus on local independent music led by Byron Bay metalcore legends in Hearts Wake. James chats to winter folk duo The Dregs who are performing virtually on the Sunshine Coast as part of Horizon Festival. And I catch up with Nick Atkins of Q Theatre to discuss a new kind of theatre delivered via text message. Then we head west for a recap of the Wham! Song of the Year award ceremony before Tommy Dean shares a few ideas for your next or first tattoo. First up, here's Matt and Jake. Jake Taylor from In Hearts Wake, thank you for joining me. My pleasure, it's good to be here. I have to ju just jump straight in to say what a strange time. Kali Yuga is uh, it's the fourth age in, um, mm. the Hindu ancients called it Kali Yuga, but there are four ages in, in many different civilizations. And the fourth age, it would to me, it would be like a, like a winter it's a wheel we don't just get to an end point it cycles back through mm. um but in saying that you know we don't have they're not specified periods of times we have to actually uh work through the winter in order to in order to receive the spring so here we are in the in what is called as also the dark age kali yuga and mm. it's a time we have to face the fires literally and that be you know all of that we've sowed all of that has been created um, it's not all negative, but just looking at it, taking a real look at what it is and uh, look at the, you know, the destruction, look at the disease around us, you know, look at the oppression, uh, look at all of the things that uh, isn't really serving us um, other than for us to learn from them right now. And here we are with a record called Kali Yuga, released in a time when COVID has come out and, you know, Black Lives Matter, some really, really important things are happening mm. and we really have to face them and and, um, and stand up and not not cower beneath and just go back to the old normal because it's not working. And I can only imagine you guys are just champing at the bit to get back on a stage. Any that aren't, I probably realise they're not meant to be a musician anymore. <laughs> yeah, you don't realise how much you miss it until you don't have it. It's become like a tribal experience, a spiritual experience, whether people realise or not to like release, to be a part of a group, a mm. crowd, um, and to just you know sing along it's, it's 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 got endorphins it's got so many different social things and every just there's so much intertwined within it i've done a, a few um just just spontaneous just going live and dropping in random people into the conversation and you know there's some guy in queensland you know he's oh it's you know it's not so great and he's just you know quite just a normal you know bleak kind of what i expected and the next guy uh, was like from mexico and he's having the, like, the hardest time you know it's testing us mm. because I don't want to say we were all like every single you know human being that is alive right now was built for these times it's whether you have the capacity within you and the support network perhaps around you to rely upon to rise to the occasion that's what this time is asking us oh it's also um for what it's worth a powerful escape and a very valuable uh one as well binge watching what have you been catching up on on, t on uh, uh tv perhaps while in isolation a couple of good shows the great was a really good show i mean ozark season three was pretty good i've been watching a lot of alone it's a, it's a wilderness survival show where they're literally like guys and girls um are out alone in the wilderness filming themselves for however long they can last okay out just looking forward i mean what are your own hopes for getting back on the road and actually uh getting this album kali yuga out to the people it reaches those that need to hear it and yeah. we can we can play where it needs to be you know heard also i've got to say like musicians you know income and touring it's like it's it's the thing that keeps it sustainable it costs a lot in time if that makes sense in terms of obviously keeping lights on and food on the table the guys have all got to work and do what they can and then making the time to make the music it becomes like a double-edged sword so you've got to find a way to to balance i hope that we can find the balance and continue to do what we do well um jake thank you very much for speaking with me best of luck to you and all of hearts wake with our uh, kali yuga it's a great record we can't wait to have you guys back on the road thanks so much man pleasure awesome. speaking with you. The band's new album, Kali Yuga, is released early August. Now for a complete change of pace, here is James with Paddy McRae and Zane Harris of rootsy folk duo, The Dregs. We've got Paddy and Zane here from The Dregs on the Sunshine Coast. And uh, so the, the live mu music experience has been a bit different for you guys in recent times. You played Airways Festival with uh, people in their cars and things. So how was that? It was a vibe. It was super different kind of um novelty experience getting to play in front of um just people chilling on top of their cars and yeah it was really cool it was a really good vibe you've had your single call me home and that that's 
found a lot of success on Spotify. You you hit 134,000 plays. I saw. It's been the best uh, response we've had from release this quickly uh, that we've seen before. So we we're, we're really really happy with how it went. It's been a great track to release for the precursor of what we've got coming up as well. We've got two more tracks coming out this year, which we're super excited to bring out. And I think Call Me Home was just a really good um, prior release for those. We never thought we'd get played on, you know, like even just some commercial radios have sort of picked it up as well. Never really thought that was going to be sort of our scene, but yeah, we're, we're super excited and happy that it's on there. We talked about Airwaves Festival, but you've got Horizon Festival as well, which is a, a festival on the Sunshine Coast. And um, it's more than just a music festival, but trying to encourage people to explore the part of the world that you guys are from. So how, how good is that festival? I think we did it last year as well um it was super fun it was really good to get it was a really great experience to jump in with the guys and and yeah they asked us again this year and we were super stoked but it's actually a really cool idea that they're doing this year in which they're celebrating almost like the different elements of what comprises uh sunshine coast which is like you know the, the the mountains and the ocean and and so forth and we were lucky enough to to get the ocean side of things that's why they sort of did a live stream down by Point Cartwright, down near the water, and it was just a really beautiful, picturesque afternoon. Kind of stormy, a little bit mysterious, um, but the sun was shining through. So it was, it was, yeah, it was a really epic experience to do it. How keen are you to get around Australia once that's possible, and uh, particularly if you've got um, a new album coming out? At the start, we were really enjoying just, you know, a bit of downtime and time to write and record and surf heaps, but um, we literally cannot wait to get back out on the road. We've been doing heaps of writing, heaps of recording, heaps of surf, and it's been a nice break away from you know the hustle and bustle of playing shows and touring. It's given us a lot of creative space um, to sort of yeah write a lot of new music and, and look at different directions and the way we're doing things and focus on things that we were cold shouldering before, like merch and, and <clears throat> our sort of social media presence. You can really just learn a bit more about yourself, I guess, when you're um, not so busy and you can have a bit of time to think. We've been kind of almost um, exploring a different scope of the genre that we we play. So obviously we're, we're, we're folk musos. We've been kind of exploring down this kind of yeah winter folk this sort of traditional feeling um which we've been really enjoying so we've we've narrowed it down um this this avenue it's been a challenge to explore all these new pathways and ways about doing things obviously the next opportunity for people to see you is uh horizon fest so if if people can hop over the border from where they're from then they can go there but people from all over queensland can head to the sunshine coast as well to check you guys out we're always around (laughs) (laughs) excellent well thank you for um taking the time today to speak to us and uh all the best for the rest of 2020 awesome thanks james cheers Call Me Home is the name of the lads' new track there and be sure to check the virtual performance out at Horizon Festival this month. Short Message Service is a new style of theatre that's been developed by Penrith's Q Theatre. Jesse digs a little bit deeper to learn more. Joining me today is Q Theatre's Director of New Work, Nick Atkins. Hey Nick. Hello. I obviously wanted to talk to you today a little bit about Short Message Service. It's such a cool yeah. concept. So tell us a little bit about what it's all about. Yeah, cool. So um, Short Message Service is a new performance project that we're delivering. Basically, it's it's uh, uh, we're connecting playwrights to audiences through text messaging. So in over the course of an hour interval, audiences receive you know, probably between about 10 and 15 different text messages um, that kind of paint a different scenario or tell a story. What kinds of things are explored in these performances? I understand the overarching theme is intimacy. Yeah, so we kind of started with int- intimacy. Um, we also spoke a lot about anticipation and we did that because um, we kind of talking to a lot of our audiences in our community that haven't been able to go to the theatre for the past couple months. We know that that's a particular experience that some people have been looking for. Um, so we offered the, that theme to the playwrights and they've kind of really interpreted them quite drastically different ways. It's a really diverse range of stories, um, but I suppose they all come back to that experience of intimacy and connection. This was a concept we developed pretty early on um, in the disruption as, as we acknowledged that we weren't going to be able to put shows up that we thought we'd be able to do. Um, so I think the text messaging uh, came about because... Uh, we wanted to get to people and we wanted to get to people in a way that was super easy and we didn't want them to have to download an application or or log into anything. It's not a play. It's not a play in a phone. It's a different form. I think it's using the skill set that a playwright has, you know, as part of their toolkit, but it's not about just trying to, you know, we're not plugging a script into a text and then pressing send. So we've asked the playwrights to engage with that hour uh, as a real-time experience. So what are things that can happen over an hour? 
um, and how can those text messages be used as, as tools? I th maybe it's uh, more helpful to say the kind of pitch that we're giving people is um, if you want to experience short message service, it's not the sort of thing you just sit down and look at front on. It's best you go about your day-to-day -day life, um, you know, do the groceries, be on the train, do whatever you have to be doing, and just let this be like a little secret performance that you're <laughs> getting, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it does it does rest a lot on the silence in between them and the anticipation wow. and what can happen in that moment. For the writers of these pieces, what kind of yep. work goes into putting something like this together? It's really hard. They've had really different experiences. Some of them have just gone, yep, this is what I want to do. And some of them have gone, I don't know how I can kind of translate this whole play that I've got in my mind into this form. It is an experiment and that's what we're excited about. So I think each one too is actually going to um, kind of deal with the brief or deal with the challenge in a slightly different way. So do you see this kind of thing working outside of a COVID world? Because I can't speak for everyone, but I think I would really appreciate having to, like being able to receive theatre to my phone on the regular. We knew that any new projects we developed uh, in response to COVID weren't limited to COVID. If Right. That makes sense. We wanted to actually use the time to explore um, art form development and innovation um, that, that would carry us forward. Our hope is that, you know, once we do this first season um, and once we kind of learn what works and what didn't work so well, that we can continue to deliver the project and maybe even partner with other companies. Um, the great thing about this is, you know, it can be national really quickly. We want to keep artists employed. It's really important at the moment as kind of gigs dry up. We need to um, we need to support our um community of creatives. We also need to make sure audiences can still get access to art and culture. When we're all locked away, it's really hard. And I think um, art and culture is a public good on a more like squishy, like personal level. <laughs> um, I think, uh, you know, we identified intimacy um, as a theme because we just want people to feel connected and feel special and good at the moment. Yeah, we hope that they kind of move away from this project um, with a little bit of a, a, a healthy disruption. Kudos to you guys for doing something like this, and I can't wait to see where it goes. Thanks so much, Nick. Great, thanks. Ah, oh, sorry, I was just registering for short message service. West Australian Music recently hosted their Wham! Song of the Year Awards in a virtual showcase. Here are some of the highlights. Hey, Kaya. Uh, welcome to Wham! Song of the Year 2020 Virtual Awards presented by Act belong commit so i'm stoked to be presenting the uh, best hip-hop song of the year for 2020 for the wham song of the year awards adrian zuke with bad luck riri featuring power negro Fisher from Clancy's Fish Pub Fremantle here, uh, presenting the Folk Award. Carla Geneve, things change. Congratulations, Carla. Congratulations, all the nominees. Did you have a good time? Did you pretend? Usually you don't have to pretend. Hello, it's Phaedra here from the Nanup Music Festival. Outstanding Indigenous Song of the Year. Miss Genius with I Don't Wanna Be. I don't wanna be me again. I don't wanna be them. My name is Daly Winter and I'm president of the Country Music Club of Boyd Brook. Now I'm very proud to present the country category. The winner is Jack Davies and the Bush Chooks with their song, Half Frozen Beer. here at Artisan Music in Malaga and we are absolutely thrilled to be with you all tonight. We are presenting the award for the global music category. The winner is... Grace Barbe with Madilo. Morgan. I am Fletcher and we are Slumberjack. This is an electronic category presented by Spotify and Fremantle Recording Studios. The winner is... <laughs> Grievous Bodily Calm with their song Alchemize. Hey, congratulations guys. I'm 
I am a music producer and sound engineer, previously from Perth. I'm going to be presenting the Punk Hardcore Award. The winner for this award is Desert Dogs with the Australian Dream. Take me alive. Katie Steele and I'm here to present the pop category. The winner is The Hunting Birds with Catch Up. You and I, we were seeing eye to eye. She's in her eyes and I don't look back. Right on track. I'm here to announce the grand prize, second winner of this evening. Adrian Zuke for the song Bad Like Riri featuring Pal Negro. I'm here to announce the grand prize runner up, Jack Davies and the Bush Chooks with their song Half Frozen Beer. Dave Faulkner here from the Hoodoo Gurus, and I'm here to present the big prize tonight, the grand prize for Wham Song of the Year Virtual Award presented by Act Belong Commit, and it is Carla Geneve for her song 2001. the winners particularly 2020 song of the year grand winner Carla Geneve for her track 2001. Comedian Tommy Dean is about to partake in his first ever live stream event on Twitch but not before he shares five tattoos he'd like to get. Hi I'm Tommy Dean husband father son brother stand-up comic sourdough aficionado and Sydney Swan's ambassador. I think that ticks all the boxes for tragedy to suddenly strike. But if we're living through these isolation times, I've been thinking about getting me some of that sweet, sweet ink. These are my top five possible tattoos. Number five, let's start with the classics. The Knucklers. Left, L-E-F-T. Right, R-I-T-E. And if I get myself in a little brouhaha, my enemy will be like, oh, I think you got the left wrong. And I'll be, no, that refers to your left. That'll be just enough time to drop the right. And as it goes down, the G is silent. That's why we don't have it. Number four, right there, Andy. Not only do I love Toy Story the movie, I want to remind people that they have a friend in me. But mostly, I think that tattoo would tickle like crazy while they were putting it on. And I think that would be a sensation to remember. Number three, a full-size portrait on my back of Hervé Villachez. Number two, and this one, helpful, all the way up my left arm, the alphabet with the letters in different colors. Why, you ask? Passwords are hard. As you get older, remembering passwords for your computer gets harder and harder. A tattoo code, ideal. The number one possible tattoo that I would get, all the way up the right side of my body, the height chart of my three children as they grew over the years. As a reminder to them that I won, none of them are taller than me. The alphabet tattoo idea is actually kind of genius. Thanks for the inspo, Tommy. That's us for another episode of The Blender. As always, subscribe below if you're a fan of the show and want to catch all the action from around Australia and the world. Bye guys. See ya.